Hey guys, Weeby News here, and today we are back with yet another video. And today we're going to be checking out this fan made Danganronpa video series made by Lonely Lemur. And if you guys remember that username, it's because they actually made a fan made execution for me a while back, and it was super fun to react to. But yeah, I noticed that they were making this like Danganronpa YouTuber series, and I've been wanting to react to it for a while, but I figured I'd kind of give it some time to progress first. And I think it's on like the end of chapter three now. So we can kind of do like the first half in this video and then maybe like the second half in a later video But yeah, be sure to check out their channel I will link it in the description and yeah huge shout out for making this I'm super stoked to see how this turns out. So yeah, let's go ahead and get right into it Okay, so first we're gonna start out with the introduction. It's gonna have pro tag support and anti-tag reveal Oh, there I am my little chibi version so cute Ah, oh, please they look so cute, too oh, KP Remixer. Oh, NPC! Nice! They're here too. The Eris. Oh, Bijou Mike! Nice. Oh, Nezumi. Oh, I like their videos. Zell! No way. Ah, oh, Kev too. Kev's awesome. Shrug emoji. Oh yeah, they're um, they're the person that made my other fan made execution. And Lonely Lemur is here too. I'm like, ah oh, yay, all the people that executed me in fan made executions are here. I wonder who they're gonna target. Would be kind of funny if they're just like, I feel this unquenchable urge to execute Weeby. I don't, I don't know what it is. Lonely Lemur. Okay, Kune Kune. The real Rosie, ultimate author. Ninja Kuma, ultimate let's player. I know Ninja Kuma too. Oh, Maddox has a, ah! She's the one who did my sprays. She's so talented, I love her. I hope she makes it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna be rooting for you, girl. Rooting for you to survive. Dongandronic ultimate edit creator. Oh, it's gonna be a wheel of fate too? Oh God. Oh no, I'm so, I'm so dead, aren't I? Okay, I kinda wanna go back through and read some of these talents that I missed. Ares, ultimate question mark. Oh, I just noticed that. Ares is the ultimate question mark. Okay, on their Kirigiri arc, I see. Little sus, little sus. What was mine? Oh, ultimate analyst. Oh, okay, nice. I feel like, I'm gonna say what I said last time. I feel like you guys are too complimentary with the ultimate analyst. <laughs> A title. Maybe it's just because I have a low self-esteem. I kind of feel like Eris deserves it more. I appreciate the compliment nonetheless. I appreciate it. Lonely Nemer, ultimate executioner. <laughs> what a suspicious talent. <laughs> if I met them in a death game, I'd be like, hey, I'm Weeby. I'm like side-eyeing them. I'm like, you sure? You sure you're not working with Monokuma? I don't know. I don't know, homie. Kind of sus. I kind of wish Nico was in here too. I know it's been a while since he's made Danganronpa videos though, but I'm like, man, the bagels, the bagels are just so iconic. I'm like, man, I kind of wish he was in here. I just want to be murdered by Nico being a Danganronpa game with a bagel. That's, that's the dream, baby. Okay, protagonist. Danganronpa? No! No fucking way! <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. I don't know, man. I want to be happy. I want to be happy, but I'm just thinking about, I'm thinking about the last blonde girl who was a protagonist in a Danganronpa game, and you know, I don't know if it's looking that good for me. I just don't know. That's pretty epic, though. I gotta say, that's pretty epic that I'm the protagonist. Even if I die, even if I die chapter one, just like, just like the blondie before me, I'll still be excited about it. Let's go ahead and go to the next one. Oh my god, that's so cute. I did my story watch a Galio. Ah, that's so cool. Oh, that's so epic. I love that. Support. Let's see here. <gasps> Is it? Ah! Oh! Ah, oh, yes! It's my bestie! Yes! Ah! Oh! oh my god, that's so cute! Oh! Oh, that's so fucking awesome! Blaze is probably like my closest like YouTube friend, so I'm like, oh, the besties! Blaze would be a really good support too. They're like so positive and uplifting. You know, your girl, she struggles with a lot of depression. I feel like Blaze could pick me up when I'm just like, what's the point anymore? I don't want to investigate. Blaze, I feel like, I feel like they could encourage me. Antagonist, let's see here. Oh, NP, hmm, Eris. Interesting, our Kirigiri of this game. Argue! Oh, that was so cool, wow! Already off to a really cool start, honestly. 
I haven't really talked to Eris too much uh, personally, but I do like their videos a good bit. I thought this comment was really interesting too by Shrugmoji. Something I find interesting is the difference of Weeby and Eris. They both make character analysis videos, but Weeby makes hers more for speculation and information, while Eris makes a conclusion for a point they want to make. There can be a Danganronpa overall theme of education versus practical, where getting information just for learning or for benefit. I think that's a really interesting uh, conclusion to kind of come to for us. Because like I said, I've watched several of Eris's videos and I really enjoyed them. But I do think that they have a very like different approach than I do. Like whenever I try to make analysis videos, I do try to focus more on them being like informational and being more like speculative. Like the point of my videos is never really me trying to say like whether or not I think like a character was written well or not. Like sometimes I might give my opinion at the end of the video. But overall, the point I kind of want to make with my videos is just like what I think the writers were intending with the character. And I want them to help people like write fan fiction or fan projects, things like that. It'd be kind of funny if like during the trials too, we kind of butt heads because of that as well. Like Eris more wants to get to the point where I'm kind of like just laying out everything almost for like information's sake. I do think sometimes I kind of have to like break stuff down like, I don't know, like super duper extremely in order for me to like understand everything. So I could see people like getting frustrated with that too. So uh, just, you know, another idea for how like the dynamics and the trials could be. But yeah, let's go ahead and do chapter one, motive. The motive is just me telling everybody to slay the whole time. That's all they need for a motive. You guys know it's true. Okay, let's go. Since none of you seem to want to commit a murder, if you don't mind me saying, but I suggest we introduce our first motive video. The longer the time is that someone doesn't kill, the more, ah, oh my God. The more poisonous gas that is released into the school. However, five people are given gas masks to survive. Ooh, interesting. God, that would freak me out so bad because like, not only are you worried about it eventually killing you, but like think of like the long-term side effects of like ingesting poisonous gas for long periods of time. You know what I mean? Like it might not kill you right then and there if somebody like murders in time, but you might only live to like 40 years old or like 50 years old because because of like the internal damage, you know? Just kind of something interesting to think about. Okay. Oh, we're the five who got it too? Oh, okay. That sucks for you guys, but um, I'm good, so it's whatever. <laughs> like, never mind, this motive isn't so bad anymore. I kinda, I kinda love it, I kinda stand it. Blaze is like dying next to me. I'm like, why are you so dramatic? Come on, it's not that bad. No, is one of us gonna get killed though? I could definitely see somebody like targeting us and like being jealous, you know what I mean? Okay, so it's me, Eris, Nizumi, Ninja Kun and NPC who got the gas mask too. Okay, chapter one, victim. Please don't be me. I'm still on here, right? Okay, Kune, Kune, ah, interesting. They were one of the people, they didn't have a mask either. The ultimate gotcha fanatic. Uh-oh, oh, it's me and Zell. Oh, I'm Lily Lemur too. Oh, we're the three people to find, to find them. Oh, ooh. Yikes! Ah, they bashed their head in? Oh my god! Jesus! Who is this killer? Okay, let's see. Who's the killer? Uh, ooh! Nazumi or Oh shit, dude! Oh my gosh! Wow, that's crazy. Oh my god! Oh my god, we get a closing argument? This is so cool, dude! This is awesome! Holy crap! It all began while Lemur and Kune were cleaning up after dinner. It's most likely Kune was in very deep thought about the motive. So I imagine he was going to devise a plan to commit a murder. Okay. Uh, it's like a Leon Sayaka moment, isn't it? But for his plan to work flawlessly, he would need Lemur gone from the crime scene. I don't know if it's too smart to challenge the ultimate executioner, though. Not, not sure what you were thinking there, buddy. He told Lemur to leave the kitchen as he would finish the last cleaning up on his own. And so Lemur, not questioning anything, left leaving Kune on his own in the kitchen. And this is when Kune decided it was time to set up his plan. First, Kune searched around for certain objects in the kitchen that he would need, including this case's murder weapon. The pestle and mortar. But even with the murder weapon, Kune still needed a few more things. During his rummaging for items, he was able to locate the last things he needed. An egg timer from the cult lead board, a large knife from the kitchen block, and a milk bottle from the fridge. Now Kune had everything he needed, he was prepared to put his plan into motion. Firstly, he poured out the bottle of milk all over the floor. Swish! 
Then set up the egg timer on top of the fridge at the back of the room. Collected the pestle and mortar and the kitchen knife. Switched off the lights in the kitchen and hid behind the door. Okay, try to trip him first. While Cooney was hiding, the egg timer eventually went off. This caught the attention of our culprit who was walking past the kitchen. The culprit went to investigate the noise and entered the kitchen with Kune still hiding. While walking in the kitchen, the culprit slipped on the milk setup and slid into the fridge. The culprit tried to get up, but Kune had already come out to ambush the culprit. They beat him in real hard, dude. That was rough. So it seemed like they were um, actually trying to target Lemur though originally. And strike them on the head with a pestle. After Kune attacked the culprit, it left bloodstains on the fridge, which we later used to identify the height and the body shape of the culprit. Moving on, Kune assumed when he hit the culprit, they were knocked out unconscious. So he went to go stab the culprit and finish the job. Oh, Jesus. But the culprit, who was very much conscious, grabbed the hand of Kuno, took the knife, and stabbed Kune, making him drop everything. Oh, shoot. Realizing he'd been stabbed, Kune attempted to make a break for it and flee from the scene. But in a desperate attempt to stop Kune from escaping, the culprit took the mortar Kune had dropped, and this is when they bashed their head in, and threw the mortar straight at Kune in an attempt to knock him out. It hit him straight in the head, killing him on impact. It seemed like maybe they tried to set it up to make it look like uh, Kune's like, original murder plan too. Realizing what they had done, the culprit fled the kitchen as fast as they could. But what the culprit didn't realize was that they left footprints in the milk. Oh, shoot. This helped us also identify the shoe size of the culprit. The culprit ran straight to the infirmary to attempt to clean up their wounds. Meanwhile, Lemur, who was with me and Zell, mentioned that he hadn't seen Kune at all after he left him in the kitchen. And that's when we decided to go check and see if Kune was still in the kitchen. Okay, so that's why we all found his body. He was, but it was his corpse that we unfortunately found. And the only one that matches up with all the clues is... Nazumi VA, the ultimate video essayist! Aw, oh, man. Oh, that's so cool, though. I love that they come up with a whole murder scheme. It's like uh, taking what I do to another level, actually. Because I always try to come up with, like, some kind of plot when I do these Wheel of Fate videos. But I definitely don't go this much into detail, so that's cool. Oh, wow, they even have an execution, too? Ooh, that's gonna be rough. Okay, let's see their argument. What is your proof that the bloodstains aren't from Kune? We've already established that his height doesn't match them. How did you forget then? Nozumi, you can't- Oh, oh, they're coming after- Oh, they're coming after them too. Even so, how does that prove they were for me? Check your shoe, shoe size, because unlike Kune, you have the same height as the bloodstains. It's undeniable! Joe's proof, just admit it! <laughs> Dang, they're all backing me up! But I have no motive to even kill! Didn't need one, you killed him in self-defense! There is no doubt about it. That was literally your motive. <laughs> the blades to the side. That was literally your motive. <laughs> we have proof. Hey, your logic is flawed. I swear, I didn't kill Kune. I'm sorry, Nazumi, but the evidence says otherwise. Oh, that's so cool that they animate them too. You've lost, Nazumi. You can't deny it anymore. Uh, we know it was you, bestie. Please don't drag this out. This is painful to watch. You keep making me out to be some evil person. Nobody's doing that. We know you did what you had to do at the time. Yeah, I was like, I kind of feel bad for them. It's like, I don't know, man. It's like self-defense, you know what I mean? I can't really blame them for defending themselves. I guess it's like, oh, you could just like knock them out and then run away from the scene. But I could see if you're just like panicked and like in survival mode and then you just like end up killing them almost like accidentally as well. Oh, hey, there I am. It's not your fault, bestie. I forgive you. It's too late to go back now. Oh, I'm sorry, Nazumi. You know, you weren't evil though, so I appreciate it. Okay, oh wow, here we go. Contains major aggressive bright flashing lights, you've been warned. Okay, yeah. Probably good for you guys to consider that too. Monokuma! Oh no! Nazumi has been found guilty. Time for punishment! I like a video essay, so probably relate to that somehow. <laughs> We're all so sad. Who's about to get traumatized? You guys are. Ah, the chain too. Gotta always have the Leon chain, huh? Final disquisition. Nizumi VA Ultimate Essayist Execution. Executed! 
Oh, okay, they're gonna be typing on like a computer. Type faster! Maybe, like a time limit or something. <laughs> Poor Nizumi! Dear everyone, I'm sorry for murdering. It's okay, we forgive you. I just want to say that I appreciate you all and I'm truly sorry about the things I have done. It was an accident, but I guess it's not too unlike me to cause accidents though. <laughs> it's okay, we forgive you. It was an accident. I knew it was an accident. I'm sorry for killing someone. I'm sorry for un uh, unadvertently starting this killing game. I'm sorry for any stress I may have caused you. I'm sorry for any unintentional crimes I have committed. I'm sorry that our time together was only brief. I'm sorry for everything. It's okay, we already forgive you. You've done nothing wrong. I wish I could go, just go back and change everything. Make it better, keep Kune alive. But alas, they were murder recipients? Is where, is where it ends. What is done is done. Just now I'll spend the rest of my eternal effa, ephemeral, ephemeral moments remembering you. Oh no, that's so sad, the friendship arc. Oh no. I mean, like, I don't blame you, Nizumi. You were targeted, and it's like, you had to defend yourself, and it really did seem like an accident. Oh gosh. How are they gonna go? I know I don't have much time, but before I go, I just want to... Oh yeah, of course, Monoku is not gonna let them finish. He's such a freaking turd. Oh no! Oh, the dot dot dots. Eh, interesting. Uh. The lights? Uh oh, uh oh. What are you doing? Oh no! Brain blast death! Oh shit, what the fuck? Oh my god! What? What was that? Holy shit! I just kinda thought they'd pass out or something. Their head exploded! That was a jump scare, dude! Lord have mercy, Monokuma! Could you chill out a little bit, please? Okay, title cards and surviving students. Our toxic quality. Our toxic duality, deadly life. That's cute, I like it. Chapter one, end our toxic duality. Ah, sad day. Chapter one, titles and surviving cards. Okay, so. <laughs> Fucking Monokuma! <laughs> That's my catchphrase, Monokuma. You're not allowed to take that away from me. Okay, chapter two motive. Another day, another slay. Let me introduce you to, drum roll please, our next motive. Okay, everyone is given a unique threat that will happen if nobody kills in the time given. Oh, Zell's was the three closest participants to her would die. Oh, so it's us maybe, since they're kind of highlighting us. So me, Blaze, and then Maddox has a... Oh, that's so sad. No, Zell's about to slay. Damn it, Monokuma. You're not supposed to say that word. It's a cursed word. Damn it. Oh, God. She's totally about to slay. Ah, here we go. Who's it going to be? Is it going to be Zell? I feel like it might be, honestly. Oh. What the? Oh, they bashed their head in a TV? Oh, wait, no, it's the hoodie person. What was their name? Okay, I think it was KPSZ8, the ultimate remixer. If for a second I was like, it's Gray Man. No, somebody killed Gray Man. Damn it. You'll never get away with this. Our first main event in this murder was done by Blaze. Uh oh. Blaze, what did you do? Blaze would never. They're too pure. When they decided to host a party, Blaze goes by Dathan, by the way. Me, along with many others, decided to help with the setting up. We asked everyone if they wanted to help too, but some people rejected. These people were... KPSCH, Ninjakuma, Eris, Shrugmoji, and our culprit. Okay. But unbeknown to them, they were going to become our main suspects. When one of them is found dead... Oh yeah, this kind of reminds me of another trial in SDRA too. Everyone who said they would help went outside into the garden to prep the area. Okay, Mike didn't do it either. With the last few people lagging behind. After the last few people left, this left the five remaining people unattended. Okay. As they all decided to split up and do their own thing, Shrug Moji went to his lab, Ninja Kuma and the culprits to their respective rooms. Oh man, was Kuma getting framed then? Eris to the conservatory, and KPSCH to the kitchen. 
After a short while, the culprit came out the room and made their way to the kitchen to get a snack of death. But when they got to the kitchen, they noticed KPSCH was still there and... Oh, hey, we get to see them with their uh, hood down too. Oh, I like it. I like the hair. That looks good. Without a mask, the culprit also realized since everyone was outside, it was the perfect time to commit a murder because nobody would interfere. That also does dwindle down the culprits though. That's definitely the mistake that they made because it's like you can't choose between anybody but the people that, you know, weren't helping with the party. But I guess maybe they kind of like plan to pin it on Kuma maybe or one of the other people like Eris. Firstly, the culprit picked up the kettle on the counter, tapped KPSZH on the shoulder to make him turn around. Oh no. Oh no, you gonna pour that on them? Oh, man, and then through the boiler. Oh, that's so wrong. That's so messed up. Okay, you did something wrong. Nizumi did nothing wrong, but you, culprit, you did something wrong. I refuse to forgive you. You better have a good trauma dump for me to forgive you for this. And then throw the boiling water at KPSCH's eye. And their eyes? Ah! This ends up blinding him. He also lit out a huge... Jesus Christ, what the... <laughs> what is wrong with you? What is wrong with you? This alerted Shrug Moji, who heard it from his lab. There were another person, I think, that didn't help out, so. Oh yeah, that reminds me. God dang it, this is probably Zell. Never mind, if it's Zell, I forgive her. <laughs> Never, I take it back, I take it back, okay? She's such a good voice actress, you know, and she's sweet. I'm sure it was an accident. She tripped when the boiling water went into their eyes. Like, you know, it's, you did nothing wrong. I'm sure it was like self-defense or something. Shrug then began to sprint to the kitchen. However, the culprit heard him coming. So they grabbed KPSCH and dragged him away. Oh my god. This is so messed up. What did he do to deserve this? As the culprit ran into the next room, they realized that they had to hide. KPSCH's burnt face. So the culprit clasped them by the back of the head. Oh my god. Ah! <laughs> It's time to stop. It's time to stop. Anytime. You can stop any moment now. And slammed his face into the TV, knocking him unconscious. The culprit then flipped them, hood up to hide the rest of the burn marks. Okay. And then they went to go hide themselves as Shrug Moji was coming. Were they among the people that discovered the body? Only a few seconds after, Shrug enters to find them unconscious. However, Shrug assumed that KPSCH was dead. Okay. Oh my god, they're just like suffering there. That's so fucked up. That's so fucked up. So he ran to go alert us outside. But knowing Shrug saw the body, the culprit thought he would be the best person to frame. Okay, so that's who they tried to frame. So to frame Shrug Moji, the culprit ran to Maddox has its lab. Oh, we get labs too, like in V3. That's cool. Then they searched around to find her supplies and they found what they needed. Her stylus pin. Since Shrug and Heza have similar talents, the culprit thought to use Heza's supplies to frame Shrug. Okay. And she was setting up a party with us, so she was too distracted to notice. So the culprit then ran back to KPSCH's unconscious body and then stabbed them in the neck, ah, penetrating the right common carteroid artery and then, and therefore killing him. This poor guy, dude. <laughs> this poor fucking guy. He could have made it a little bit more chill, Zell. I'm just gonna say. I'm just gonna throw that out there. The culprit then went to run back to their dorm to avoid suspicion. While also purposely dropping the bloody stylus pin. Okay. They eventually made it back to their dorm, and I imagine they were quite relieved. Meanwhile, Shrug came to warn us that KPSCH was dead. Me and Kev began... Being the first people he told, immediately ran to check it out. And that's when we discovered the body. And who is the killer of this case? Don't, don't say it, Zell. Don't say it. Don't say it. No, Zell! No, God dang it, I smacked myself on this. It's okay, it's okay. Guys, 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 she didn't mean it, okay? God only knows how many times I told Sora to slay in SDRA2, so you know, she was just confused. Can we blame her? Can we blame her? This is innocent, innocent, obviously. Okay, ultimate graphic commission. Has to be one of the- Oh my god, I have to do them? Wow, even, uh, wow. Even Shrug's defending them? Has it tried to use her supplies to frame me? Oh no! Ah, oh, they're going against each other. That makes sense. That makes sense. Since uh, she used Heza's stuff to frame uh, 
to frame Shrug. Shrug stole my supplies to frame me. He's the killer. Oh, shit. They're fighting. The girls are fighting. What's your mean proof that you couldn't have committed this crime? I heard KPSCH scream, so I went to the investigation and found him dead. I was setting up the party with everyone else. And that checks out. Uh, hard to say. Could it really be one of them? But if it's not you, who else could it be? Heza, it was her stylist you found. And if not her, then Ninja Kuma, Zell, or Ares. It's just not me. Believe me, Weeby. I've already said it's Shrug or anyone else who wasn't helping with the party. Okay, we did say that. I'm like, we're like, mm, maybe. I don't know. If you didn't do it, how do you think the other managed to kill without someone noticing? She snuck away from the party when no one was looking. He murdered while everyone was doing their own thing. Do you have any hardcore evidence that it's the other? Her bloody stylist was... I didn't realize Shrug was British. Her bloody stylist was found at the crime scene. If Shrug actually found the dead body, the BDA would have gone off after Weeby and Kev found it. Hey, the BDA thing was important then. Dang, I don't know if Zell really meant to do that, but that would be very damning in my opinion. To think that Shrug did it when he's like, Oh guys, no, no, I saw the body. But then it's like, why didn't it go off when we saw it too? Like that's three people. But yeah, if they were still not dead, then that makes sense. Wow, that was actually a really good, uh, that was actually a really good idea, even though I don't think Zell planned it to be that way. Perhaps when Shrug, it could have been anything. Uh, I've got it. <laughs> Blaze having their protagonist moment. I've got it. Something isn't adding up. Both of our suspects have alibis. I think it's safe to say that it cannot be Shrug Moji or Mad X has a. Wouldn't that mean we're back to square square wine? Wait, no. I think I have an idea who the other killer is. Who the killer is? In that case, Shrug. Tell us what you know. Tell us, Shrug. I'm now the Tagami of this game. Okay, ultimate voice actress argument. It's okay, Queen. I believe everything you say. It's gotta be her. It's over, Zell. Everyone has an alibi. Just give up. There's no escaping it. Everyone else, wait. Oh, oh my god. Is it the Sora wig in the background? Oh my god. I love it. Oh, that's so cute. Oh, what a good attention to detail. Oh my god. And Rizzy, too. Oh, cute. Just give up. There's no escaping it. But guys, she voiced Sora. She can't be evil. Come on. Everyone else has an alibi. Just give up. There's no escaping it. Everyone, wait. Let's see how she defends herself. How am I the only one without an alibi? You weren't helping at the party, you can't deny that. It's true, and it's That's an obvious point. But I wasn't the only one not helping with the party. Gotcha there, weebster. That's true, but everyone else has something that proves that it can't be them. Stop trying to twist it, come on. <laughs> it's all so unfortunate. It's literally a shrug. The BDA didn't go off when he found the body. That's because when I found the body, it wasn't dead. We know this because the time of death was when I was talking to Weeby. Yeah. Yeah, I guess that would be the thing that kind of proves that they weren't it. Because I feel like I'd be kind of, uh... I don't know, I love it when the culprits use, like, really niche rules like that to their advantage for murder plots. I feel like having, like, a rule back you up just makes it seem, like, more foolproof, you know what I mean? Because I feel like that would really convince me that Shrug did it until, like, we confirm with the monopad that like the time of death is a different time. Our monopads prove this. Everyone else, everyone else who didn't help is innocent too. And all the other suspects too. Mm. Just cause Shrug's innocent doesn't mean Kuma and Eris are. But we know they are. Kuma was recording a video when the murder took place. He was literally filming a Let's Play video. Come on, that's his thing. We have the footage. Okay, it probably has like the timestamp and stuff on it. Eris is innocent too. She was in the conservatory. We could see her through the windows. You're guilty. No more excuses. And would you just give it up already? Was the TV a way to hide the burn you made on KPSCH's face? Yeah, totally. What do you mean? I made! Uh, it's not me, bestie! Huh? Uh, it was an accident! Oh, pfft. KPSCH wears a mask for goodness sake! He probably wears it to cover up that scar anyways. Oh, we can... Well, girl, girl, this is sad. Come on. <laughs> we can tell if the scar is new or not. It would be very, it would be very obvious if it was like a super old scar or not. But you, shut up! <laughs> what the fuck? I want to see 
Zell's reaction to this? Shut up, bitch. There was no proof that his scar wasn't from before the game. Girl, I thought you did this to save us, but now it's kind of seeming like you want us all to get executed. What's up with that? Before the game, bitch. It was Blaze she called a bitch too. I'm dead. Never mind, maybe you are guilty. There is, his death portrait has no scars. I feel like in general, you could probably tell, honestly, if it was like fresh or not. Cause we discovered the body like pretty soon afterwards. You know what I mean? But yeah, it's interesting to use a death portrait too to prove uh, her wrong. I didn't really think too much about that. Game over, Zell has been found guilty. Time for the punishment. Uh, here we go. Voice acting themed. Let's see. Kind of reminds me of the Mizuno and used execution so far. She's gonna have to like perform or something. What is this? Sounds of solitude. Hmm. Oh god. You can like take her voice or something. Oh my god, Rizzy! Yeah! See? I told you, she can do anything wrong. Ah, uh, Sora too! Ah, uh, Queen Sora. Oh wait, no! What? Oh, I'm sure I'm sure she slayed that in a good way. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Like a shark or something. We're drowning. That'd be really messed up too. Oh fuck, a torpedo! <laughs> oh wait, it kinda looks like a microphone actually, and then I'll look at it. Oh it dies! It does look like a microphone. Oh, clever! I like that. That's interesting. Connection lost, no signal. Deadly life. These are so cool. Chapter two in, connection lost, no signal. Oh God, we're about to be on chapter three. That's gonna be rough. <laughs> Our little chibis are so cute, dude. I can't get over it. To be continued. Hey guys, this is Weeby from editing. So I wanted to put a quick trigger warning before this next chapter. Obviously the characters are like gotcha life characters, so it's not very detailed when it comes to like the gore, but I feel like the type of murder that's done could still be triggering for people. So I wanted to put this quick warning up for you guys in case you think that would upset you. Uh-oh, whoa, we're going already. The body discovery, no. No uh, slaying comments this time, Monokuma? Another day, another slay. You get the gist, you know what I mean. Jesus, come on, you guys already know this. Man, I thought I had like a motive video to prep me before this, but no, we're going, going right into it, you know? Okay, let's see. Ooh, need like a, <gasps> Ooh! oh my God, no. Oh my god, <laughs> so fucked up! <laughs> Who did this? I swear to god, if it's like Blaze or something, I'm gonna freak the fuck out. Jesus Christ. There was no, no reason to be that excessive. This killer, I don't forgive. Unless it's Blaze. Oh god, number two. Oh wait, in the trial? <gasps> oh no! What the hell? They killed him in the trial! Jesus, what the? Oh my god. It's like a poison or something? Like they poisoned them? And so it just like took effect later? That's so interesting though. I never thought of somebody just like dropping dead during the trial. That's wild. That's an interesting idea though. I like it. The first notable event was when Monokuma announced a new rule. Okay, so that was the motive for this one. The rule was if two people killed in one round, it would be the killer of the first person to die. That would be classed as the black end. Oh, there's two killers. Oh, dang. I've always wanted to see a case that like utilizes that rule. You know what I mean? I'm excited. Oh, that means somebody's literally going to have gotten away with it. This meant to our killers that if they wanted to kill, they would have to be the first to do so. So I guess like one person had like a quick murder plan and then like the other person had like a slow murder plan, you know what I mean? Like poisoning over time or something like that, maybe? I guess we'll see, but that's, that's cool, that's cool. I always like the idea of like, having to live amongst like a killer in a death game like this. I just feel like that would raise tension so much. It's meant that our killers, that if they wanted to kill, they would have to be the first to do so. Okay, so they could be like classified as the black end. To make sure they were the first, the male killer started setting up immediately after everyone went to bed. Okay. Firstly, the killer went to the kitchen and poured poison in the bottom of a teapot, ready for the morning. 
Okay. Yeah, so they... So that is what happened. I had a feeling it was gonna be like poison or something. They're like, at the trial, they're like, oh my goodness, I can't believe they died. That's so wild. That's so cool. That's so interesting though. I like, I like the way this trial's going. This obviously did not take very long, so our mail killer went to return to his room. I guess they just didn't even care who would target it either. But somebody else was quicker. However, on the way back, our male killer discovered our female killer setting up her plan. That, oh, yay! Oh, thank God Blaze didn't do this. Okay, we're good, we're good. Oh, they look so happy about it too, smiling, carrying the chainsaw. That is correct. Our female killer was moving a chainsaw. She got from the supply shed outside. Into the now deceased Zell's lab. Oh, why do they look so happy about it? <laughs> Kitty ready to slay! Man, did I accidentally tell you to slay? I'm sorry. I'm sorry if I did that. That was wrong of me. She chose this room in particular as its soundproofing would muffle the sounds of the chainsaw. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah, like a voice acting room. Firstly, she left the chainsaw in the lab, then exited the lab to acquire her victim. Okay. Our female culprit snuck into NPCs, AKA her victim's room. Poor NPC, dude. They just make memes, okay? They didn't deserve this. And quietly snuck up to the sleeping NPC. Grabbed a spare pillow that NPC wasn't laying on. Okay, they at least suffocate them before doing the cutting up. And jumped on top of NPC, waking him up. However, this didn't matter. She put weight on his chest so that his lungs could not inflate and he couldn't struggle. Okay. The killer then smothered NPC by blocking incidental air into a pillow. That's better than being alive when being chopped up, I guess. But it's like, you know, it's the bare minimum. It's the bare minimum that I'm asking for from the killer, you know? She kept this up until NPC stopped moving and had been asphyxiated. Now that NPC was dead, this killer could move on to the next part of her plan. She dragged NPC to Zell's lab, ready for something she had schemed. The culprit also collected a spare roll of soundproofing and laid it down on the floor flat like a map and then set NPC onto the soundproofing. Oh, Jesus Christ. Picked up the chainsaw she brought into the lab and started with what you'd expect. Using the chainsaw, the killer severed each of NPC's limbs. Jesus, why? What was the point of this? How does this cover up your scheme? I don't understand. Are you just evil? I guess it is chapter three. Leaving him in half a dozen separate pieces. His head, torso, left arm, right arm, left leg, and right leg. Poor NPC. The killer then picked up the soundproofing. NPC's butchered body in it. In it like a makeshift carrier bag. Ew, <laughs> dragging it. Dude, oh my god, this is such shit, dude. I hate it here. I hate it here. I'm getting some major flashbacks, man, and I just, I just, I fucking hate it here. I hate it here. That's all I can say. If you know, you know. She then left to finish the final acts in her murder. However, she made one damning mistake. While they were sawing part of NPC's body, they unintentionally cut off strands of their own hair without noticing. Okay, brown hair. Moving on, the killer exited Zell's lab. Ugh, I'm so glad this is the person that killed first, at least. Get them out of here. I don't want them here anymore, please. Please remove them. Moving on, the killer exited Zell's lab and entered my lab. I can try to frame Blaze. You gonna try to frame Blaze, my bestie? Hell no. She then layered down NPC's severed body on the floor. Jesus and picked up a broken mic stand from the lab. She then placed the broken mic stand down, collected each of NPC's limbs, <laughs> and skewed them on the broken mic stand. This was repeated for each of NPC's body parts. Jesus. The killer then picked up the soundproofing and the chainsaw. Why, God, why? Why are we here just to suffer? and disposed of them, and disposed of them outside in the dustbin. She then finally returned to her room to sleep. Why does she look so happy doing all this? <laughs> look at how evil she looks. I'm enjoying this so freaking much, Weeby. You have no clue. Ugh. Moving on, after he knew the coast was clear, our male killer checked to see what our female killer did. They're like, ah, shoot, dude. They decided not to remove the poison, though? I thought that they wouldn't have known about the death. Interesting. So he entered my lab. Gonna mess with the crime scene? 
Discovering the sickening sight of NPCs and massacred corpse. Yeah, ain't no way you're gonna put the final blow on a NPC, huh? The killer then panicking, ran to undo his murder plan he set up in the kitchen. It's interesting there's still like a gray man though, you know what I mean? They're not gonna get convicted though, right? Because of the new rule. Unless Monokuma overturns it. However, it was too late. Oh, okay, so they were trying to get rid of it. Okay, well that's good at least. They had some remorse. However, it was too late. Dang and Dronic already used the teapot and consumed the poison. Knowing Ding and Dronic would die, the killer gave up and returned to his room. Sad. The next morning, me and Weavy were planning on exploring all the labs. Oh, he looks so cute. Look at our little chitties. But when we returned to my lab, we found NPC's body and it was super fucked up and we're both traumatized for life. After the investigation, the trial started. Oh man, that's so hard to know that they're gonna die during the trial, man. It's like, I want to feel bad for the killer, but at the same time, it's like, you know, you made your bed, you gotta lay in it. And during said trial, the poison caught up to Dangandronic. Obviously, I feel a lot worse for Dangandronic. And so he dropped dead. Oh my god. Oh man, right next to me too! And the killers of this case are... The real Rosie. Why do you look so evil, girl? I was like, what's her talent, dude? Ultimate Junko Kenny? It's like... What is going on here? Why do you still look so happy? Oh, wait. Oh my God, Kev. That's so sad, dude. Kev, why? Bad Kev, you're not supposed to murder. Come on now. Oh man, that's rough. At least Kev gets to survive. That's gonna be pretty rough for me though, cause I feel like, uh, well, I guess, uh, I don't know if I'm technically close to Kev in this like fan gan, but uh, I could see that upsetting us since uh, me and uh, Blaze talk to Kev a lot in real life. Dang, that's wild though. Rosie went wild. Kev being the last to kill gets off scot-free, making Cyrus the blackened and the one to be executed. Hopefully Kev can learn from his mistakes though. Maybe that can be like his arc, you know? He's like, I I slayed once, but I won't do it again. Maybe he feels remorse, you know? I could see him like feeling remorse and then like living the rest of the killing game for like Dingandronic's sake because he like feels so bad about it. You know what I mean? I could see that being his arc. Oh man, dude, that would mess me up though. I would be so upset if somebody close to me like that ended up killing. I feel like it'd be really hard for me to trust, honestly. God, this chapter in general would be like kind of a roller coaster for me, like finding the body in Blaze's room and then finding out that Kev like also killed somebody. My trust would be like pretty, I don't know, man. An NPC is so cool too. I would hate to see them go, especially like in that way. God, that would be such an emotional roller coaster, man. That'd be that'd be a rough chapter. Well, it looks like we're caught up now. Unfortunately, the execution and the argument armaments aren't out yet. Maybe whenever like the fourth chapter comes out, I can like react to that one and then and, like the rest of this chapter but yeah I really enjoyed this I like that they tried to do like some different stuff you know like the two killers that was really neat I really like the second chapter a lot too I thought that one was also uh, really strong like uh, with using like the body discovery rule and then also uh, having like Heza and Shrug like go at it and like blame each other. I like the idea of like the killer using that dynamic to their advantage. They can just kind of like sit off on the side while they're like duking it out being like, they did it, no, they did it. You know what I mean? I think that was really cool. Very well played, Zell, well played. But yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. This was definitely super duper enjoyable. Definitely check out Lonely Lemur's channel. They have a lot of really interesting videos. And yeah, I will be patiently awaiting updates for the series. But yeah, guys thank you so much for watching this video please do leave a like and a comment and subscribe if you did enjoy it that stuff really does help me out a lot with the youtube algorithm but yeah once again thanks guys for watching and i will see you real soon